Today we're going to be doing a review of the Eureka Atom 75. But before we do that, I want to say welcome to Kabegin's Coffee Corner. This channel is designed to help you choose the coffee gear you want to brew with at home. If you could please like and subscribe, that really helps me push out more content for my viewers to see. Also, if you'd like to support this channel, please use the affiliate links below while I'll make a slight commission at no extra charge to you. Lastly, I have an Instagram account called Kabegin's Coffee Corner. You're more than welcome to follow me there. First off, this machine was sent to me from Espresso Outlet in exchange for a review. So if you're looking at purchasing this, please go to Espresso Outlet to um, support them as they have been supporting me faithfully during this channel as it continues to grow. Um, so they've let me use this and they don't see this video before I put it out. So I have full freedom to say whatever I want to say um, as I've used this grinder. So I want to start off by going over the features starting from the top and the bottom, going over some of the things I like and the things that I don't like. First off, this is a very heavy duty grinder. It comes in at $1,400, so it's a pretty pricey home grinder. And I'm gonna explain why somebody should consider even purchasing this for home, as it's probably not for everybody, but it is definitely for many. So starting off, it just has this plastic a uh, linen plastic hopper, nothing special here, but this is a grind by time machine. So you set it up and it will grind a certain amount of time um, and that'll be your dose and you adjust it based off of changing the increment of time. So you fill up the hopper with a, a good amount of beans and do it that way. It doesn't single dose, meaning it doesn't shoot out 18 grams if you want 18 grams and that's all you put in there. Um, and it doesn't grind by weight. So that's kind of the features of this. It has a locking hopper on the back, meaning if you wanted to, you could push this plastic hopper piece in and it would shut off the chute to the beans. So you could pull out the entire hopper without the beans spilling and you could change out your beans if you would prefer to. However, I don't believe this grinder is the best to do that because if you do push that in, you'll still probably have about 36 grams of bean still in the hopper that you'll have to either grind through or discard in order to change your beans. So there's kind of problematic there, it's meant to really just put a bag of beans in and let it go. This will fit a full 12 ounce bag of beans, which is kind of standard in the specialty coffee world on the size of bags that beans come into. Um, right here we have the grind adjustment right here. And there's a very small grind indicator right here, which is basically just a divot into the machine to kind of let you know what grind setting is. That's probably one of the things I don't like the most about this grinder is it's very, very hard to know what grind setting you're on. However, I don't find that a super big deal um, because I just kind of tweak it as it needs to be and doesn't, I've never paid attention to the amount of numbers on this grinder because I don't switch it from espresso to pour over. I think this can grind for pour over, but I've only done it for espresso as that's what I need it most for. But I didn't know that there was a divot on that until I actually looked at the grinder from this angle to film this video. Um, so I didn't even know that was there. However, the the grind mechanism to change is very, very satisfying to move. It has great feel and resistance to it. Um, this is called the Eureka Atom 75 for the main purpose of the fact that this has 75 millimeter flat burrs, meaning flat burrs, the two birds that sit on two burrs that sit on top of each other. You'll find this similar in a lot of grinders that you'll find at um, cafes like the Malconeg, um, which is a staple for most. Uh, cafes around the US. So it's got similar burr set to that, meaning the flat burr versus the conical, which is more of a cone shaped with a nut, a cone shaped inner burr and a, a kind of collar on the outside of it, making it cone shaped rather than the flat burrs. Um, so 75 is rather large birds found pretty big in comparison to most other home grinders or even commercial grade grinders there. 75 is a very, very large burr, which means it grinds incredibly fast. And uh, that's one of the features we're going to get to here in just a second. Um, on the front, you have a little screen and you have five buttons. You have the plus and minus buttons, which will allow you to adjust your settings of um, how much coffee you want it to uh, shoot out. So you can do it by the increments of 100. Um, so you can do it to 3.15 if you want to. And that's the amount of times that it'll take out to shoot the grams. And you can adjust that down by 0.5. Five one hundredths. So you could adjust it down to 3.1, uh, 3.05, etc. Um, so up and down here, uh, double shot and single dot 
shot, and then the manual mode. Um, all of this is indicated by simply pushing this button, and it will spurt out the amount of beans you want. In the home setting, there's this thing called retention, which is what people try to avoid, which is basically brewing with stale coffee and how much coffee is actually stored in the machine that you end up transferring over into your porta filter in there. Um, if you're confused about that, I can elaborate more in the comments. If you have a question, feel free to ask. But what a lot of people do for home is they set up the single dose to shoot for like half a second so it kind of purges out the old excess grinds in there and then they switch to the, the double shot which would be their typical 18 gram dose. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and power this on. The, on the back side, we're going to get into that real quick. The back side has, it's very difficult to move because it's kind of heavy. Back side has the Eureka logo, high speed, um, it's quiet and an atom logger. These are all stickers so they can simply come up along with a couple of uh, Allen key things to adjust there. Uh, power knob on the side, power switch on the side, as I should say. Um, so flip this bad boy on and it takes a little bit just to turn it on. There we go. Um, and you can see all the adjustings here. So, so far I've pulled 287 shots with it, which kind of gives me a great idea to um, basically view the taste of it. Um, so in here we have, on the bottom we have this button. You press this button and it will shoot out for the X amount of time that you want, or in manual mode, you'll just push it and it'll shoot out until you push it again. And I will, um, until you lift off of it. So I'll show you that here in just a second. You have the porta filter hooks um, and I find it, it, you can set it up to be holding a spouted portafilter or a uh, bottomless portafilter at the same time, so I can vary between the two. You have to set it up just right to do that though. So you put the portafilter in there and there's a little lip here to kind of hold it in. Um, you don't really need to do hands-free grinding because it's so fast, but um, it's really easy to get in there and push the button. And it's got the chute right here and it's also got this nice little LED light. Um, as you can see, kind of on my hand to let you see the grounds on there. You have a uh, specialty 75 representing the 75 millimeter burrs that are in this grinder. They also have the 65, which is going to be about 10 millimeters um, uh, smaller of a burr, which will make a difference on time, but it'll still be a great grinder. Um, so right now we have it set to 3.4 sec seconds, which will give me about 18 grams of coffee. So we're just going to go ahead and show you what that looks like. I'm going to put my portal filter in and we are done and you got your 18 grams of coffee give or take here um, and I'll kind of explain my workflow in just a second uh, but nice fluffy grounds doesn't really need to be distributed a ton but it still helps if you do so but it's probably one of the fluffiest grounds in grinders with the least amount of clumping that I've really used personally in grinders um, so I'm going to switch it to the manual mode and say like I didn't get enough rounds in there um, I just get a tap and you can based off of how you tap affects how much kind of comes out so that'll kind of get you to where you need to be for the grind settings um, Last feature that this grinder has is the fact that on the bottom of it, I can't really show you, um, it has adjustable, or it doesn't have adjustable, it has um, grippy feet. So it has like little, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of what the names of those things. Anyway, it like kind of sticks, suction cups, suction cups on the feet. So it kind of sticks to the counter, which means it's not moving very easily. It's also pretty heavy. Um, so that, that works out well. One of the things that I don't like about this grinder is the fact that it has no catch tray for excess grounds. So typically, if you don't move your porta filter just right, you'll find some grounds on your table or on your coffee bar or in your kitchen, however you want to do that. Um, and that can be a little frustrating. So I found two things that can kind of solve that issue in this grinder. Uh, one of these is this little thing right here. This is a um, rechargeable miniature vacuum cleaner, whatever you want. Um, and this does a phenomenal job at cleaning coffee grounds. It doesn't really do a good job of cleaning anything else, maybe small crumbs, but you just turn it on here, go across your counter, and that'll pick up all of your excess coffee grounds, so then you don't have to take a rag and wipe them up or anything like that. Um, the next thing that I did um, to make the best, the best way to do it is I got this little knock box. Um, a knock box is basically a way to knock out the puck after you brew shot of coffee. Um, so I got this one right here from Amazon and 
You can put your grinder right there on that and the cable is caught a little bit. So it sits perfectly flat and it sticks off the side just a little bit, but it doesn't move anywhere. And then if the grinds go out, it will fall right on here and I can sweep it into the knock box and you pull it out into a little drawer and you just knock your puck in there and you're good to go. It does raise your grinder, your already tall grinder up quite a bit. So if it's under cabinets, it's not gonna work the greatest to put this knock box underneath there. But that was kind of my two solutions to kind of fix that major, not major, but most significant problem about this grinder, in my opinion. Um, the grind quality on this is incredible. Um, I've used some different grinders between the Niche Zero, um, other flat burr grinders with uh, SSP burrs, which is a kind of expensive higher end burr set that you can put inside of it. And this has the stock burrs in there. And the amount more of more coffee taste that you get is insane. The amount of more flavors that pop, the amount of more that you kind of see in your coffees and taste and feel in your coffees is just incredible based off of this grinder. Uh, but it's also $1,400, so why aren't, like, that's an insane amount. And there's a reason why I love this grinder and why this place, this grinder is actually taking a permanent place on my coffee bar, meaning this isn't going back to espresso outlet like most of the gear that I reviewed does. This is something that I wanted to actually keep here um, on my coffee counter because of one thing that I think is often overlooked in home espresso bars. So it's typical, especially when you're looking into the range of this grinder, this probably isn't going to be the first grinder that you're going to buy if you're into espresso. Um, but there's two things that you kind of got to figure out. Um, one is having something that can single dose. Um, so you can basically change up your coffees a lot if you are into that and you have multiple coffees. Um, we're not talking about pour overs or any types of grinding for that. Um, and one that is easy and quick. And then you also have the difference between flat burr and conical burr. Um, so one of the things I love about this is I prefer the taste over a flat burr grinder like this is. Um, so I naturally gravitate toward that when pulling shots of espresso. And um, I feel like this is perfect for my lifestyle and my coffee because typically it's, it's not uncommon for me to drink four or five shots of espresso a day. Um, meaning over time, that takes a while, and with anything in life, the more you spend, the more benefit that you kind of get out of it. I started brewing coffee with a $10 hand grinder that I thought was phenomenal, and I was like, why would anybody else get that? Then one of my friends had a Porlex Mini, which was a $70 version uh, seven years ago of the hand grinder that I had, and I used that one time, and I was like, this is so much easier to use. Then I switched over to the first one grinder that I had that was a hand grinder that was not plastic burr set inside and that felt so much smoother gave me so much more consistency and was so much faster then I switched over to electric grinder and that went incredibly fast and I was like how did I ever wait so long to hand grind my coffee and that's how I feel with this one is I went use different things like single dosing grinders and and a lot of grinders take 15 20 seconds to 30 seconds to grind even with a motor in there and while that's not a bad thing and that's not a long time after using something like this that grinds great coffee in less than four seconds it's hard to go back to single dosing it's hard to go back to those grinders that take a little bit longer um, and working through this grinder makes it so much easier when you're hosting people or you have people or you're making a lot of shots back to back, not having to weigh out your beans and then putting them in a single dose grinder, waiting for it to come out and then do your routine that way. And you're waiting 20 seconds after you already weigh your beans to grind out. It's, it's a long, it's, it's a time consuming process when you're doing a group of people. If you have somebody over to your house or apartment or condo, wherever you live and you're doing, drinks for a family or six or seven or eight people, whatever it is, it takes a lot longer to do that. Um, with this grinder, you can have your scale sitting right in front of it, put your portafilter on there, tear out the scale um, so it's at zero, put that in there, make sure you get your 18 grams in and that'll take four seconds. And um, once you have this dialed in to shoot out 18 grams at a time, you don't even have to be weighing every single time you uh, pull your shots of coffee when you're having a group of people over it makes the whole process so much quicker when you can 
four seconds done versus 20 seconds at a time, and you multiply that by six, it gets to be a couple of extra minutes of just brewing coffee, and then that's not even counting the time that it takes to scoop some beans, put it into a cup, weigh it on your scale, and all that stuff. Um, but then there's also the drawback of the fact that you don't get the opportunity to change coffees near as easily um, because this isn't a single dosing co coffee and you're supposed to fill this up the entire way. Now there's people who've done mods to this and added bellows to push out the excess coffee, added a single dosing thing on this grinder to make it a little bit more convenient to use. I haven't gotten there um, and honestly I don't foresee myself going that route with this grinder uh, because this is is built for like kind of the purpose of shooting out quickly. And that's what I, I love about this grinder. So I think if you put this on your counter next to like a niche zero or something along the lines of that, you're getting your flat burr um, and you're getting your conical burr. And on top of that, you're getting your single dose, which you can change um, your grind settings uh, easily if you want to do pour over. And you're also putting, um, you can change your origin of beans if you want to. Um, and then you have this, which is going to crank out things fast. Um, it's going to give in, uh, a different experience to the same coffee that you'd be brewing with the conical burr, and you're just going to get a lot more out of it. Um, this grinder is absolutely incredible, and a grinder that I'm very, very fortunate to have because I know $1,400 is an insane amount. And I'm not recommending everybody should go out and spend that kind of money on it. But if you're looking for speed, um, if you're looking for great taste, um, I think this is a very underrated grinder because most people aren't looking for grinders that aren't single dose and I get that in a lot of ways I was that person for a long time but you're gonna buy a 12 ounce bag of beans anyway so just throw the whole thing in there go through that 12 bag 12 ounce bag and do a different one after that um, and that works out great and I've been really happy with that I don't store I don't mind storing my beans in here because of the fact that um, like I'm not worried about it getting stale or degassing because I go through I go through an entire 12 ounce bag of beans in like a week or so probably a little less than that um, so it's not like it's sitting in there forever it's not like it's getting that stale um, sometimes coffee isn't the best and at its peak until three four weeks later depending on depending on the bean um, so that's never been an issue for me um, with this grinder um, I know it's often overthink I know a lot of people think you have to put it in an air tight seal like uh, Airscape or the fellow Atmos, um, those things, and yes, that's good for a lot of beans and taking your time through it. But I just, I don't find a need, and I don't feel like that is um, that's a problem for me with this grinder or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I love this grinder. I'm a huge fan of it. Um, thank you, Espresso Outlet, for sending it over to me. And um, if you're really looking at purchasing this grinder or any coffee related thing, hop on to Espresso Outlet, have them help you out. Um, they're a great company. They're super easy to work with. Um, I'm grateful for their partnership in this. They didn't see this review um, before I sent it out, but this is a grinder that I love, and this is a grinder that's going to make a permanent home for what I foresee a long time on my coffee bar because of the ease of use, because of the quickness, um, because of just the convenience of it. It's, I don't really see much up to it on the non-single dosing um, grinder market, um, and I'm just... I'm really happy with it. Um, I'm really happy with it, and I hope this review helps. You're going to be seeing this a lot um, in different videos, reels, and stuff on Instagram, um, so be sure to check those out. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and again, please like and subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.